This is the DJM S11, Pioneer DJ's much anticipated sequel to the S9. So this mixer is aimed for scratch DJs and turntablists who want to get more from their mixer besides basic DJing functions. And this mixer works with Toronto DJ, Record Box DJ, and even Tractor if you mess around with it. And I'll show you how to make this work later on in this video. Anyway, here's a quick summary of my review. The DJM S11 is a worthy sequel to the S9. It comes with everything you've come to love from the S9 such as its faders, pads, layout, and effect paddles, but adds more to the mix with its 4.3 inch touchscreen which not only displays waveforms but does other useful things as well, like give you browse functions, the ability to use touch effects, and the ability to control 4 decks straight from the screen and a whole lot more. Now besides the screen, there are other notable improvements as well and here are 4 of my favorites. Number 1. The addition of a CDJ slash controller USB hub which enables you to connect your CDJ or controller straight to your mixer instead of your computer. Number 2. The added pad mode options which give you the ability to individually choose what pad does what on each deck. Number 3. The new smooth echo effect which allows you to activate a separate echo effect via your fader or pads. Number 4. For Serato DJ users, the ability to use the Scratch Bang feature which lets you instantly load a sample or song to any deck for you to play and mess around with at any time. What you gonna play now? Um, yo, the people say what? what? And now for my next number. Now, overall, I love this mixer and I highly recommend this unit for any beginner or pro. For me, this mixer is pretty much perfect except for like two things which I'll get to later on in this video. Anyway, with that said, let's begin the review. So let's start with the layout and its design. Like the S9, Jazzy Jeff assisted Pioneer DJ in designing this mixer. And though the S9 and S11 look pretty alike layout wise if you ignore the screen, there are a couple of differences worth mentioning between them. Number 1. Added Pad Modes These buttons here let us control the ability of the pad section and mode of a deck. And this is a much appreciated improvement over the last model where one pad mode button affects all the pads. Number 2. Bigger pads and node buttons. The pads and node buttons on this unit are bigger and I really like this improvement because those buttons are the most important buttons you'll trigger on this mixer when doing complicated DJ tricks and mixes. Number 3. Smooth Echo. This function allows the user to activate an echo effect by either cueing a pad or cutting the faders. And this is an efficient and fast way to echo out from the track without needing to select your effect and activate it. And speaking about buttons and triggers and activating things, the components on the S11 feel exactly the same with the S9. And that includes the knobs, buttons, pads, paddles, and volume faders. Two things to note about the faders though. Number one. The Magwell Cross Fader has been improved. It feels better and has been strengthened to give you more stability when scratching. Number 2. All the faders are unfortunately not interchangeable with the S9. So an S9 volume fader will not fit in the S11 mixer. Bummer. Now the biggest problem for me with the S9 is this. Faceplate wear and tear due to scratching. Do you see this? That is literally paint from the faceplate. So does the S11 fix this problem? Well, according to the press release document, they do. But only time will tell. From using this unit for days now, I haven't really noticed a difference which is quite surprising. Anyway, let's now talk about this mixer's best feature which is its 4.3 inch touchscreen. So this touchscreen can do a bunch of functions like the obvious which is adjust your settings. But the 5 notable ones are the following. Number 1. It can show your waveforms and through this display mode, you can even scrub through your song and even tempo bend them. Number 2. 
You can browse your songs and even load them from the screen. Number three, through touch MIDI mode, you can access alternate functions like internal mode, record mode, master tempo, key sync, quantize, etc. And you can even adjust effects parameters. Number four, through touch effects mode, you can interact with two effects at the same time through the touch screen. And number five, you can mix and control deck three and four all from the screen. And that includes browsing for songs, queuing them up, and even adjusting their volume. Now, personally, I find the touchscreen to be pretty good, especially when accessing and using all those functions. But if you want me to nitpick, and I mean nitpick, I honestly find the touchscreen responsiveness a little bit slow when trying to queue decks three and four. You can definitely queue them up, but you can't go crazy on them. And another thing about the touchscreen is that I'm not a big fan of its screen resolution. The CDJ3000 just came out, and that unit has a beautiful screen. And I really wish I got to see that screen on this mixer. But then again, like I said, I am nitpicking, and overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the screen and its functions for DJing and performing. And speaking about DJing and performing, if you guys want to ensure that your performances go perfectly every time you DJ, you guys gotta check out Young Girls Online class on how to DJ from setup to sound check. There it teaches you a bunch of things, like how to set up your equipment, how to make sure everything sounds right, and just how to have an overall better and smoother time DJing live. So if you want to check out that DJing live masterclass and a whole lot more, the first 1,000 people who click the link down below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. And Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With over 20,000 classes, graphic design, music production, songwriting, and more, which are all filled by passionate creatives like myself, you're pretty much set for life if you want to learn anything new, efficiently, effectively, and economically. Because an annual subscription on Skillshare just costs us $10 a month. So make 2020 year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Anyway, let's now move on to the software side of things with the SC11. The SC11 natively worked its route with DJ and Recordbox DJ, and the screen on the unit doesn't change when working with either program. What does change though are the pad modes, and they're pretty unique with both programs. With Recordbox DJ giving you the option to customize your pad modes on the software, and Serato DJ giving you so many alternate methods to use your pads by double clicking them, shift clicking them, and just clicking them multiple times. But by far my favorite new pad mode is the scratch bank feature on Serato. What this mode does is that it enables you to instantly load up a song or sample and control it. Now a function that is not advertised by Native Instruments or Pioneer DJ is the secret function to use Tracker with the S11 via internal mode and DVS. It all has to do with proper audio routing, and once you get that fixed up, you're pretty much good to go. Except for the screen though. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see your waveforms, browse for songs, access touch MIDI, and control decks 3 and 4. Everything else works perfectly though with proper MIDI mapping. So you'll only be able to control the mixture's buttons and functions of the tractor through MIDI mapping. And that is my S11 review. Let me know your thoughts on this unit down below, and with that said, I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.